This is the boost dig. It's a little 3D printable part that I made for the Bamboo Lab P1P 3D printer after I noticed a small slot at the top of the printer that was unused. I also made this, the boot cam, which is one of the three attachments that I've made for the boot stick. It's designed to hold a mobile phone so that you can improve your time lapse quality. In this video, I'm going to show you how I made the boot stick, the three attachments, as well as how you can customize these to fit your own needs. To make the stick, I used Project and Offset to create the profile sketch and then extruded it to the existing P1P step file in order to match the complex shape of the slot. I usually had a tolerance of 0.2 millimeters to 3D prints, but since this was designed to be press fit, I made it without any adjustments for tolerance because I wanted it to fit very tight so that the vibrations of the printer would not dislodge the stick and its attachments. I also considered the tolerances when designing the attachments. The boost stick will require some force when placing into the attachment, so you may need to tap it into place. I recommend printing one boost stick for each attachment because it is unlikely that you will be able to remove the boost stick from the attachment once it is in place. So if you follow us on TikTok or if you're subscribed to the channel on YouTube, you've probably already seen the first attachment. It's the R.I.P. Prusa tombstone. How to ruin a Prusa fanboy's day. Come here, come here, come here, come here. Come here, yeah, come, 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 come. So just to be clear, no ill will towards Prusa. I love their printers. I have four of them and that's really what got me into 3D printing and I thought it was a funny short form content to make. So attachment number two is this simple container design. I made the design exactly half of the length of the front of the printer and made it to fit the profile of the printer for a seamless look. You can add your scraper or needle nose pliers to the design. And I've uploaded the Fusion file so that you can add whatever text you want to the front of it. Attachment 3 is the boot cam. I wanted an easy way to mount and unmount a spare iPhone since the camera for the P1P isn't very high quality. I made the boot cam profile as an offset to the body of the P1P itself and oriented the camera to face diagonally across the print bed. A quick Fusion 360 tip that I learned while making this model was that you can create a mid-plane between two non-parallel surfaces. This is very helpful when you're trying to sketch on a plane orient at 45 degrees like I was for the boot cam. I also made a wedge to keep the iPhone secured and a small booster piece for if you don't have a faceplate printed for the P1P yet. Another useful feature of the boot cam is that I made it with parameters that let you customize it to fit your phone. My iPhone SE doesn't have a case on it, so I used a 10mm width. If you have a different phone or if you use a case, you'll need to increase the width of the phone parameter. It's easy to do, just go to modify, then change parameters, then change the value under phone slot width to the desired width of the slot. I recommend adding 2-3mm to three millimeters to the thickness of your phone, including the case. Another thing that's adjustable is the phone slot depth. Make this a few millimeters shorter than the distance from the edge of the phone to the camera so that the mount doesn't block the camera. You can also adjust the angle that the phone sits at within the boot cam by adjusting the phone angle parameter in Fusion 360. After reviewing the time lapse footage, I thought I could center the bed in the field of view slightly better, so I reduced the angle from 130 to 125, and this is the result that I got. There are some vibrations present in the time lapse, but I prefer this view of the print when compared to the perspective of the stock P1P camera. Another perk of the boot cam is you can take vertical time lapses, which are perfect for TikTok and YouTube shorts. This is a vertical time lapse using the same boot cam that we used in the time lapse that was shot in landscape. To perfect the framing of the print, reducing the angle by an additional 5 degrees for vertical video may be beneficial, but will depend upon your phone size and the field of view of the camera. As I was setting up the phone for the vertical time lapse, I realized that the charging port would be blocked in this orientation which is an issue when capturing longer prints. To make the charging port accessible, I made an alternate version of the boot cam with a cutout for the charging cable. I also made this basic step file for the boot stick to serve as a template for anyone who wants to make their own attachments. Let me know what other attachments you'd like to see added to the boot stick down in the comments below. The first three reasonable requests that I get, I'll try to make for free. Thank you.